Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The, the great city of Edinburgh, more than most, welcomes people from across the globe. You will be familiar with our city's wonderful arts festivals, but its year-round reputation attracts visitors all of the time. Combined with that, the conference centres stimulate business tourism, and of course the city is a gateway to the rest of Scotland. So tourism and hospitality are vital for the city's economy. 33,000 jobs depend upon it. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, it is almost impossible to overstate the harmful effect that the public health restrictions due to the pandemic have had on that sector. Last year, 1.5 million people came through Edinburgh Airport in July. This year, 170,000. Last year, more than 3 million people visited Princess Street in August. This year, less than a quarter of that number. Half of our hotel rooms were empty this summer. Our visitor attractions down 90%, and of course, our venues and theatres remain dark. Would the Honourable Gentleman give me? Thank the for giving way. He's making a passionate defence of Edinburgh there, but he will share my concern. I am sure that our islands have also suffered particularly badly, such as the Isle of Arran and the Isle of Cumbria. And despite my pleas to the Chancellor, these, these requests for ex extra help for these islands have gone unanswered. Does he not agree that sometimes support is needed because it's a question of sustainability for our island communities? It, it, indeed, indeed I do, and I shall come on to that, because at the core of this dilemma is the fact that we are talking about in industries, hospitality and tourism, whose very essence is bringing people together. So social distancing is the antithesis of what these industries grew up for. And yet they are going to have to try and manage the problem because everyone understands the necessity and requirement for these guidelines to be enforced. Nobody more so than those working in these industries themselves. So the question is how we can manage. And we have all seen our firms in our cities and towns trying to operate now with reduced capacity. I've seen this myself in my own constituency. Last uh, month in Perthshire on a family holiday, I stayed at several hotels, at several restaurants, all of them doing their utmost to try and conform to the guidelines that are enforced in the government, indeed taking a pride in their ability to keep their customers safe. But behind the brave faces, there is a deep and a dark despair. And it is the despair that comes from knowing, Mr Deputy Speaker, that at the end of a hard shift, more money has left your bank account than has went into it, no matter what you do. And the truth is that for pretty much all of these businesses, these reduced capacity operations are unviable in the longer term. But they do do two things. One, they postpone the date at which money runs out completely because they slow the rate of loss. But more importantly, they retain some jobs and capacity and expertise in the sector so that when the restrictions change, they can spring back. And that is why I believe the number one priority now must be looking at these businesses and seeing how we can support them with their reduced capacity operation through to next spring. And that means we have to abandon this silly one-size-fits-all blanket policy that treats all businesses as if they were the same. We need a more sophisticated, more tailored, more targeted approach that works with individual businesses and tries to get them through to a position next spring where they are no worse off then than they are now. And support will be required beyond that, because even if the restrictions are lifted, it will take time for public confidence to return and for the market to get back to where it was in pre-COVID levels. So we should be planning for two to three years further support. But it is right that the public purse should do this because these businesses are closed and closing because of public policy and a public imperative. Yeah, so, yeah. Mr Speaker, this must be the priority. The Government cannot abandon support on the 31st of October and stand back and watch these sectors decline. Yeah. Simon